In this video, I'm going to show you how to change this image into this image in Lightroom 2022. Let's jump straight into it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Thank you very much for checking out this video. In this video, we're going to be editing this Lightroom uh, photograph here, and trying to bring out the best in it. I'm going to run you through my process of editing in Lightroom. Let's jump straight into it. So as you can see here with this photo, it's uh, very blue to begin with. So the color temperature is off. I can tell that straight away. So let's uh, open our basic tab here. Now let's go to our color treatment and profile. Now the first thing I always do is change it to Adobe standard, just like so. Now if we go to our white pinpointer, and we're just gonna zoom in here by pressing Control plus on our keyboard. And then let's have a look, see if we can move it around. Just gonna select the cell here to begin with and move it over and reselect. Now you gotta be careful when you select your white pinpointer that you actually do click on something that's white. Uh, that's gonna give you the best results. As you can see there, I clicked on the sail and what happened was it stayed the same kind of blue. So I'm just gonna click on the boat still I'm not very happy with the way that white is looking the white balance is looking so I'm going to manually go in now and change the temperature a little bit warmer only slightly I'm just going to have a look at the overall image and see if it needs to be come down green or red so let's go back to plus 18 it's a little bit on the green side I'm just going to raise it just very slightly and maybe the yellows just very slightly like such okay let's zoom in and there's still a little bit on the green side. I'm just gonna raise it just a tad more on the magentas. Okay, let's have a look at the exposure. Now up here in Lightroom, at the top here, you can see that we've got our histogram, and this is gonna tell us if we're uh, overexposed or underexposed. Now, if you go to the top triangles up here and here, you can, it'll be telling us if we're overexposed this side or underexposed this side if they're lit up and both of these are not lit up so our exposure is actually good now we can just have a look let me just zoom out again i'll be careful not to hit the camera i'm just going to change the exposure just to see what the image looks like if i darken it or lighten it and as you can see there we've got clouds in the sky up here so that's one good thing we can work on and if we brighten it it can just come slightly brighter. It was quite a warm sunny day if I recall. So I'm just going to maybe give it a half 0.05 raise on the exposure. Now our contrast, now this has been shot in raw from the camera. So we get to pull them colors around a little bit more. So the contrast is naturally a little bit low about the box. So I'm going to raise it just to plus 10 and go to the highlights, shadows, whites and black to have a mess around with that contrast and hopefully bring everything out. So now in my previous videos, if you've not seen them, I'll link one above. Uh, the, the usual thing that a lot of people do is lower their highlights and then raise their shadows like that. And you get this kind of hdr -y look. It brings out all the clouds and everything like that. But it looks a bit artificial in my opinion. And just the way I like to do things in Lightroom, it's not for me. So what I like to do, I just move the slider up and down until I find what I'm happy with. Don't go all the way down. I just, and what I'm trying to look for is when there's a point, you can normally tell when you're editing your photos, there's a point at which it changes from being the original photo into bringing out there with the highlights if we take the highlights there's a point where you can see it change that's what i'm looking for if you can see there as i'm moving the slider there's a bit there it just pulls in clouds out so about there maybe so minus 48 on the highlights and we're getting them clouds to come through let's go to the shadows now and as we raise the shadows you can see that we're pulling the details out in the water and on the boat down here Let's have a look and again there's a point where you'll find it just switches over it kind of like changes from not having anything to 
pulling them details out in the shadows and that's what I'm looking for so it's around about there if you look at my image as I'm doing that there's a point where it just pops and that's plus 34 on the shadow slider okay so we've done the highlights and shadows now let's go on to the whites and blacks now if I hold down left to alt while I'm doing the whites our screen will go black as we begin to slide it and what this is going to do is show us where our highlights are and if you look right in the middle of the screen around about here we can see that there's a reflection off this uh, windshield of the boat here and that's what's given us our white marker so it's reflecting the sun so as we raise the highlights we can see all the white areas coming through on the image or our highlights coming through and as you can see if we raise it all the way to the top the image again well overexposed so you've got to be very careful here use your left alt key as you're doing it and all you want to do now because that's a reflection of the sun i'm not going to go off that i'm going to go off the next brightest thing that comes into my image uh, in this case there it goes just getting that little bit of white off the top of the boat there so i'm just going to bring it down just very slightly there we go plus 51. now let's go to the blacks it's exactly the same hold down left alt on your keyboard as you begin to move the slider and you can see that uh, we're showing where the dark areas are and where our blacks are coming crushed so let's have a look that's well over the top now the important thing to remember with Lightroom is there's no right or wrong way to edit your photos it's just down to your personal preference making sure you're happy with what you're doing don't edit any, don't let anybody tell you what you're doing is right or wrong now the way I do it is down to my personal taste and just showing you a few tips and tricks. If anybody tells you you're doing it wrong, ignore them. Do it how you want to do it. So with the blacks, we're going to hold down left alt. And just begin to slide. Now with my blacks, I do like to bring them out a little bit more than the whites. And obviously I don't want it all the way down like that. It's overkilling or crushing them dark areas. So I'm just going to select it about halfway down like so. And there we go so we've done now uh, highlight shadows we've got contrast quite nice now we're going to go on to presence with our texture clarity and dehaze now our texture brings out the finer details in the image for example brickwork or ripples on the water so if i raise that up you can see that the finer details are coming clearer and if i lower it obviously it goes um, less clear so if you think of texture as fine details now i normally like to go plus 20. it's just a personal taste i do this with all my images it depends what camera you're using though you'll find that in what lens combination you're using you might find that it's not as sharp as you expect so you, you can raise or lower that texture now with the clarity this alters the overall image how clear the image is so what we're going to do is raise this up and you can see especially in the clouds here watch these clouds so if you think of the texture as fine details and the clarity as the medium to large details in your image that's how i think of it below that you can see that the clouds and the waves and everything goes a bit blurry so i'm just going to raise that to plus 21 as well that's how i like to do it it's around about 20 to 30. now the dehaze is an excellent tool here we move it to the left Obviously, we had add haze to the image. If we raise it, we remove haze from the image. Now, again, I like to always add a little bit of dehaze. Even on a bright, sunny day, you're going to get that haze in your image. Now, everything I try to do with my images in Lightroom is trying to enhance the image as best I can. Right, so we've done that now. Now we've got vibrance and saturation. Now this image is really blue at the minute, it's really oversaturated a little bit. So I'm just going to lower the saturation and just feel where it feels right. See at naught there, can you see, hopefully you can see that it's very blue, it's almost like unnaturally blue. If I raise that saturation up, it's just going to make them blues really pop out. But it just doesn't look right, something's not sitting right with the saturation. So I'm going to lower it to about minus 10. And the vibrate uh, vi vibrance i'm going to raise up to plus 20 plus 30 shall i say now we doesn't seem like we've done much there 
But let me just lower that saturation down a little bit till I feel it's right. And this is all down to personal preference again. I'm going to leave it as minus 20 on the saturation and plus 30 on the vibrance. So that's our basic tab done. What that gives us now is a good starting point to really start working on this photo. Okay, next we go down to our tone curve tab. And we're going to open this and have a look to see if we can improve or enhance our photo with the tone curve. Now I'm not going to explain the tone curve to you. There's plenty of tutorials out there on <laughs> specifically for tone curves. All you have to realize is this top half of the curve is your light areas and highlights. And this bottom area is your darks and everything in between is like your mid-tones. So the way I like to do this is to move up and down our highlight slider and just see what feels right with the image. You can see as I'm moving this, if I pull it down, I'm getting the clouds coming out. If I raise it, we're getting a bit more pop on the sail here. So I'm just going to feel what, I'm just going to slide it until I feel it's right for my taste. And I do like it about plus 10 there. Now we are slightly punching. If I go up here to the histogram, it's giving me a red indication and it's showing me. If you look down here on this boat, where my little hand is on this boat, if I go to this top corner, it's showing us the red areas on the boat that are getting blown out because we're now brightening the image a little bit too much. But I'm happy with that because that's the reflection of the sun coming off the boat. So let's go down to the lights and just see if we can. And this one actually, normally what you tend to find, if you raise the highlights and the lights, they normally go together. What I found in this image is just raising the highlights and lowering the lights seems to work best. Makes it pop a little bit. So that's minus six. If I show you that, we're losing a little bit of detail. I'm not sure if YouTube's going to be compressing this enough. Probably compressing it, you can't see it. But if I raise the lights, it's losing detail on the sail, which I don't want to happen. So I'm just going to lower it to minus six. And there we go, we retain the detail and then it looks a little bit nicer as well. Now the darks, let's have a go again, just sliding it up and down to see what feels right. This is a tricky one because sometimes you feel like you have to move it somewhere, but sometimes the best option is not moving it at all. We just double click on the slider, it resets it back to normal. So if I move it all the way down, as you can see, we lower down darks. And if we raise it slightly, then obviously we're pulling them, uh, we're, we're unleashing them darks, moving them to the highlights more. If we raise it right to the top like that, we're going to get blown out highlights again. So it's really a tricky one. Sometimes you feel like you have to move it. Just slightly higher, just so we're getting a little bit of detail on the side of the boat there. With that, we're losing too much information in the cloud, so that's the problem. Don't think we are. I'm going to go to plus nine on that. Now the shadows. Again, I'm going to raise these up. It just seems to work with this image if I raise it up. Again, plus eight on the shadows. So that's our tone curve done. Okay, let's have a look to see before and after how we're getting along. So there's the before and there's the after. Now we're still getting this saturation of blue, but we're going to fix that in a minute in our HSL tab. So let's go back to our image. Now let's check lens correction is on, and it is. Um, that's good because it's going to remove any distortion from the lens. Let's remove any chromatic aberrations. And now what I like to do is go to detail first before I do any kind of color grading. And I'm just going to sharpen this up. If you press Control plus on your keyboard, you can zoom in to your image. I'm just going to look at this boat because this is obviously the subject in this image. I'm just going to raise the sharpening until I feel it's right. The good part to look on is these lines on the sail here. Now hopefully you can see these if YouTube hasn't compressed it too much. On my computer I can see them quite well. So I'm just going to raise it up to about 90. And they come really pinpoint sharp there. Now the radius if you hold down left alt as you slide this up and what you're looking for is just as the image as you can see our screen goes gray what i'm looking for is as soon as it becomes 
as clear as possible without coming over clear. So it's very hard to explain how this works. But I'm just going to the point where it doesn't over sharpen it. And it's about 1.7 on that. And as you can see now that boat is looking pretty sharp. Same with the detail, we do that again, press left alt. And you're looking for when it comes as clear as it can, but not overdoing it. You don't want to over sharpen your images because it becomes very evident that you've over sharpened it. So again, about 45 on that and that boat's looking sharp now. Now the masking, uh, obviously you don't want the whole image to be sharp. There's only certain, you want your subject to be sharp. But you don't really need like uh, the hills in the background or the power lines in the background sharp. So we're going to raise our masking until all we have is the outline of the boat and the houses in the background. And that's quite high up, about 90. If I lower that down, you can see the whole image is being sharpened. If I raise it all the way to the top, only certain parts. I'm just going to lower it down just so we get the ripples on the water sharpen the boat. Now, the noise reduction. If you look in the sky, normally the sky is the best place to look. We can see there's a little bit of noise where we've added the sharpening to the image. I don't think that's there on the original, but what we're going to do is just press left alt again and begin to raise our noise reduction until we see that disappearing. About 55 looks pretty good. It's lowered it enough that I'm happy with it. Now I'm just going to move the contrast slider. You can press left alt and just see how it affects the image. It's very hard to spot what this noise reduction does on the contrast of things, but if you look very carefully, you can see it doing something. As there's not much noise in our image, then obviously we're not going to be able to uh, see it that well. And that's all that detail done. Let's zoom back out of the image by pressing Control minus on our keyboard. And there's our image, that looks so much better. Instantly that sharpness and detail is really making this pop. Let's compare it to the original again. Oh yes, and you can just see the lines now. Hopefully YouTube hasn't compressed this too much. Everything's popping a little bit better now. So, we've done the detail, we've done lens correction, we've done the basic tab, done tone curve. Let's do our HSL tab now. This is one area I really like working with. And I always start with saturation now because we've got a blue, mainly blue image here. The key to this is the aquas and blue. And I'm going to lower the saturation on our blues just to make it look a bit more natural. And as you can see, if I lower it all the way down, it's really going to desaturate the blues. I'm just going to try to see what the aquas do because there's going to be different parts of the image that are in aqua and not a lot altering with the aqua there. So it really is down to the blue saturation slider, how much we remove here. Now I'm just going to lower it down to about, again, as this is all personal preference and it's just in your eye what you feel is right. Now, depending on how you like to uh, edit your photos is some people like to add saturation to make it pop. Some people like to make it more neutral. Um, with this particular image at naught, it's definitely oversaturated. The sink about it, I'm not liking too much. So I'm just going to lower it down to minus 20 on the blue slider. I'm looking for other colors here in the background, and we're going to have oranges on the brickwork and a bit of yellows, There's maybe a little bit of green on the mountains in the background or hills in the background. So I say, let's move the orange slider and see how that's affecting. Can you see there the um, houses as I move the saturation? It alters them in the background. Now again, this is personal preference. I'm just going to raise it slightly, if anything, just to make them a little bit more prominent. Excellent, just like that. Now I'm going to go to my luminosity and I am going to just move around with the blues. Hopefully, as you can see here, the sea is really dark blue. I don't really like that. I want that to be more of a light blue. I'm just going to raise the blues up a little bit just so they're not too dark. The sea wasn't that dark if I remember it correctly. Just like so. And let's see if the aquas change anything. We've got a little bit in the sky up here with the aquas. So let's move them about and just 
again, it all comes down to personal taste and what you feel is right in the image. I'm trying to remember what the image looked like when I took it. I think what's happening is the shadows of the ripples of the water are making it look a lot darker than what it was. It was a sunny day and it definitely wasn't as dark as that. Now, because we've added our shadows and highlights, etc. in our basic tab, we can water them again in a minute. And remember, there's nothing wrong with going back to your basic tab and altering as you're going through your image. Let me just change the houses though in the background with the luminosity and that comes down to our oranges. So as you see, if I lower our luminosity, we're getting a deeper orange. Or if I raise it, we're lightening the area. Now, the thing is, I want this boat to stand out. So I've got to be really careful here. If I raise it up, we're kind of losing the boat into the houses. And if I lower it, it kind of looks a little bit too much. I think I'm going to lower it slightly just so the boat pops out a little bit more. Now, this ain't a well-beaten, well-class photo by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, this was in my to go in the recycle bin. But I just thought I'd show you guys how we edit a photo in Lightroom. We go to our reds now, and we're just going to see if anything changes on it. It's a little boy or a life boy on this boat that's changing with the luminosity. Probably won't pick that up on YouTube though, but there doesn't seem to be much else red in the image. So I'm going to leave that at naught. One area that I'm really interested in though is this sea and the sky. These are quite predominant features in this image, so I really need to get these right. So I'm just going to go to the hue now and have a look at the blues again. See if we can tone this down a little bit. Oh, and that's too much. See what's happening. It's making it look like we're in the tropics now. If I lower that down even slightly, it's making it really fluorescent blue, and I don't like that. So let's raise it the other way. And again, if we raise it, it's going to make it look purple. So that's maybe not the way to do it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to our masking uh, tab at the top. And what we're going to do is see if we can select the sky for me. We're going to work on the sky, then we'll work on the sea. So it's just detecting the sky now, see how good a job it does. And that's done a fantastic job there. This is Lightroom latest one, uh, the latest version. So now what we can do is by pressing O on your keyboard, you can begin to see we can alter the sky without contrast or exposure, etc. And that's going to bring out the boat a little bit more. Again, I'm going to be very careful with this. I don't want to overdo it. Now, another good way of changing sync is adding or removing the texture and clarity. And I might do that with the water down below. So let's uh, lower the highlights in the sky and let's add a bit more shadows to them. So they're really popping them clouds a little bit. Just going to up the contrast a little bit as well. And I'm going to desaturate the sky just to make it look a little bit less blue. Because at the minute the image is still way too blue. And that's probably about right there. I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow as well into the sky. Just like so. By pulling that yellow, it removes that blue from the image also. So we've adjusted the sky. Let's have a work on now the sea here. If we can make that something similar to that, then we're in a good place. Now, the thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to choose a new linear gradient. And by holding shift on your keyboard and raising it up, you can see what areas are going to be affected. Now, I don't want to affect the boat, so I'm just making sure our reds area here this red highlight now you can toggle this on by pressing o once you come off it so pressing o on your keyboard will highlight it or disable it and now what i'm going to do i'm going to lower the saturation down now hopefully we get a nice gradient because it's a linear gradient tool getting a little bit of black that's coming into blue let's have a look let's see if we can raise that i'm just going to pull it down so it's not too much of a harsh um, fade between the saturated area and the unsaturated area. So if we press O again, we remove that. So we've re removed some of the 
uh, saturation from the sea. And what I'm also going to do, this is a fantastic tip to draw someone into your photo if you're trying to make them look at the subject, which in this case is the boat. I'm going to blur this beginning section of the sea. There's, I don't want people looking at this area here. There's far too much detail. So I'm going to lower the texture and clarity. Now I've got to be careful here because our gradient changes quite quick. We don't want it to look too processed. Oh, that's how I don't want it to look. I don't want it to look too processed. I just want it to pull the person into the boat. And that looks pretty good. And that's that done. So now what we've got, we've got less saturation. And as we get to the boat, there's more saturation. It comes more clear. Okay, this image is looking pretty good. Let's have a look to see how it looks before and after. So there's our before. See, we've got a very green blue tint on it, and this is our after. Now, I'm just going to have a little mess around with the contrast again. I think we can still make this pop a little bit with a little bit more contrast. So that's what we're going to do now. Go back to the basic tab and just up that contrast a little bit. If you press Y on your keyboard, you get the uh, before and after. So press Y again, it resorts back to the version you're working on. Just going to up the contrast a little bit. And I'm going to press Control minus, and that brings it to full size. Now it's looking better, a lot better already. Still not happy though with this blue in the wall right here. It's still oversaturated for my liking. So what we do, go back to the HSL tab. And again, we're just going to go to our saturation. I'm just going to lower the aquas down and I'm going to lower the blues a little bit more just so it comes a little bit less apparent that this isn't the tropics this was in Weymouth in England and trust even though it's nice water down there it's definitely not tropical see that you can't see the bottom or see fish in the water it's more like a, a greeny color so I'm just going to go back to our luminance and change the blue down a little bit maybe to the as you can see, when we're altering this slider, it's changing the whole image. It's making the sky and our sea different color. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just going to go to our hue, and change the blue into maybe a slightly more green. Just very, very slightly. If I overdo this, it's going to look ridiculous. Maybe a plus, that's about right. Plus minus seven now. Okay, now let's go to our color grading. This is what's really going to make the the uh, give it a style on this photo. So we've got our shadows, midtones, our highlights, and we can add a global temperature to our image. Now, because it's very blue, I'm naturally going to want to slide it up to the yellows. Can you see how that changes our image? It makes it look more real instantly, and it pulls them blues out of the water. Now, one way of I think it's control or shift if you hold shift down on your keyboard as you move find your color you like and then raise it and it will stop it from rotating on your color wheel now I'm just going to go around in a circle and see what feels right because our image is mainly blues down here in the blues everything's blue you want to come the opposite side of our color wheel to balance it out and as you can see there, if we add yellows or oranges, it just makes the whole image really a lot more neutral how it was. And that is looking so much better, even just on the global side of things. Let me just go back to our color wheels. We can change the shadow, midtones, and highlights. And I'm just going to work each wheel here and just see if we can bring out any more detail or make it look a little bit better. So I'm just going to work on each one and see how it... now. This one here, if I reset it, this is our shadows. And as you look, as we circle round on our wheel, what's the color of the sea change? You can see that by moving it around, we're altering the color of that sea. So it might be worth raising that up slightly, ever so slightly, maybe to a more greeny color. Now we've got to be very careful here not to overdo it. If we overdo it, it's gonna look like a 70s photo which some people might like but I just want to be very subtle on this sea here and there we go that's looking nice now our mid-tones let's see what that that changes the whole look of the image look at that how that affects the whole image because most of our colors here in our histogram are in our mid-tones so this is going to have the biggest effect on our photo 
So I've got to be very, very careful again here that I don't overdo it. I'm actually going to leave the mid-tones. I'm quite happy with how the image looks. Now our highlights, we move that, you can see the sky and the everything else being affected. But because we've changed our global setting, I'm probably going to leave that as well. By double clicking on the uh, adjustment, it resets it. So that's worth knowing as well. Now, because we've changed our shadows, we can alter how dark or light that effect comes in. I might just pull it down just slightly. It looks a little bit better with it down slightly. Now, again, it's personal preference. Now, the blending is how harsh your adjustments come in between the shadows, mid-tone and highlights. So just have a mess around with a slider. And as I raise it there, you can see the sky up here gets a little bit more uh, yellowy or a bit more green in it, yellowy green. So I'm going to just raise it and see which works best. If I lower it down, it seems like there's a bit of magenta. And if I raise it up, it seems to go a bit yellowy. I prefer the yellow side. So I'm just going to raise it up to about 54. Now the balance, I love this slider, as you've seen in my previous videos. So I'm just going to move the slider up and down. And you can see there, if we lower it down, it becomes a little bit more green again, a little bit of aqua green in the image. And if I raise it up, it seems to bring it out a little bit more. So I'm going to raise it up to about, and just slide it until I'm happy. About 35, I'm really happy there. Now, there's one other thing that I like to do to all my photos, and this is personal preference. I know a lot of people don't like doing this. In fact, they like to remove it. And that is a bit of vignette. Now, go to our vignette and you go one way, it adds a white vignette around the edge. If you go the other way, it adds a black vignette. And I always like to add a little bit of black vignette to, no, the key is not to overdo it again, or that's what I prefer. Just gotta be very careful with it that you don't overdo it. I'm just gonna lower it down slightly. Mess around with your midpoint. You can see that the circle adjusts the more you go one way or the other, opens or closes it. And then the roundness is obviously how round the vignette is. And that looks quite nice. And feather is how much of a feather we get on the vignette. Now the highlights, because we've not messed around, it's more mid-tones. We're not seeing much of a difference here. But if you look at our histogram up here, as I move the highlights, you may be just able to pick out what areas is it affecting. Now, kind of made this look a little bit 70s and most people may add a little bit of grain to their image just to make it look a bit more vintage but i don't like adding grain to my image it seems to lessen the the uh enhancements we've done so i never add grain to my images but that image is now looking rather neat i'm just going to go to our basic tab with all them adjustments we've done in the hlsl and global temperature changes you can see that our highlights have been pulled back so i'm just going to raise our highlights a little bit or exposure a little bit more i'm going to expose it a little bit more just to bring it, the image back out and there we go so that image is now done let's compare it before and after so there's a before really blue really flat uh looking image pretty naff and there's how uh altered Lightroom version. Hopefully that gives you some idea of how to alter a, um, a photo though in Lightroom. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Let's have a look at them full size on screen now. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And while you're here, why not check out this video? Thanks for watching everybody.